Hello, my name is Mark Webb. In this video, I'll be talking about how to get started using the Dropper plugin. If you're unfamiliar with the Dropper plugin, please check the video description for a link to the Unreal Marketplace store page. In my opinion, the plugin is very easy and straightforward to use, but of course I would think that because I'm the one that built it. So I've decided to make this video to try to help other people learn the ropes in the easiest, most stress-free way possible. The first thing we need to do is install the plugin. We can do that by going to the Library tab in the Unreal Engine Launcher, finding the Dropper plugin in the Vault section, and clicking Install to Engine. Once we've done that, all we have to do is open our project. Now that we have our project open, let's open the Dropper plugin and look at the interface. The Dropper plugin is a new editor mode, that means it's just like the landscape mode or the foliage mode, so we can open it by clicking the Modes button in the main toolbar here, and clicking Dropper. When we do that, we begin simulating the game world. This is exactly like the regular in-editor simulation. The only difference is that now we have a set of tools that we can use while the simulation is running. Obviously, to get started testing these tools, we need two things. We'll need a place to drop our assets and some assets to drop. We can drop stuff here. This is just the default third-person template project. And we can drop these shapes. These are Megascan's assets that have just been imported. Let's drag one of these static meshes to the palette on the left. You can see that when we drag, we get a message saying add static mesh or blueprint. We'll get to blueprints later. Uh, but when we release, we can see that uh, the mesh has been added to the palette. Before we start changing any of our settings, let's try dropping our asset and see what happens. To do that, all we have to do is click in the viewport. I'll do that a few times because it's fun. So what, what's happening here? Our meshes are falling, but they're not colliding with the floor. This is because they don't have any collision geometry. This is an easy thing to fix. We can hit Control Z a few times to remove those meshes if they haven't been called already. Then let's go back to the selection editor mode and open those assets by double clicking them in the content browser. What we need in order for this mesh to work is a simple collision mesh. We can see that we don't have one by clicking collision, uh, simple collision. If we had a collision mesh, we would be able to see it represented here by a green wireframe. Fortunately for us, Epic has tools for generating collision meshes. If we click collision on this top toolbar here, we can see what those are. This apple is basically sphere shaped, so we'll choose add sphere simplified collision. And when we do that, we can see that we now have a very close fitting collision mesh. It's not perfect, but that's okay. These will still work and look really good. If we were using something concave like a bowl or fruit basket, we would probably want to use either auto convex collision with a large number of collision hulls, or we would want to use uh, use complex as simple over here in uh, collision complexity. Let's hit save, go back to the dropper mode, and see what happens. Excellent, this is exactly the behavior we're looking for. Let's adjust these settings a bit. Let's change the size of the brush to 10 units, the height to 30, and the number of actors per drop to one. This means that every time we click, we'll only drop one apple. Uh, but that's a lot of clicking, so let's turn on automatic mode. This means that instead of dropping one actor per click, we can hold the left mouse button down and we will continue to drop assets as long as the button is being pressed. Then let's increase the drop rate to something like 600. Now we have a much more controllable brush. If we wanted to drop just a few apples into a shopping cart or something like that, this would make much more sense. Now let's switch to the sweep tool. With this we have a force slider. Let's set that to positive 20 and let's set the height to zero. Now we can use this to push our apples around. Let's say that we are trying to get more of them into that corner. All we have to do is click and drag to push them along. Then if we decide we don't actually like them there, we can switch to the Remove tool. The Remove tool can be a bit tricky. We're in automatic mode, so everything that contacts the brush while we're holding down left mouse button will be removed. But when we do that, we can see that we're still pushing our apples away. That's because the force slider is set to a positive value. If we change that to a negative number, like negative 20, we'll start drawing meshes toward the brush like a vacuum. Uh, we have to be careful though, if we hold down the left mouse button to start drawing the mesh toward the brush and then let go while it's on the way there, it'll just be flung in some strange direction and we'll have to hit undo. 
Now I know what you're thinking. Those apples are way too small. Don't worry, we can change that. On the left, if we click the arrow next to our mesh, we can set the scale range. Personally, I prefer a wide range of sizes, so I'm going to set the top end of our scale to 4. But if you're the kind of weirdo who's very particular about apple sizes and you want to scale them non-uniformly, you can do that here too. While we're still over here looking at the palette, I'd like to add a few more things to point some stuff out. If we were to add five red apples over here and we didn't add any more green apples, then when we drop, we would be dropping apples in that ratio. If we want a player to be able to interact with these apples, then instead of static meshes, we would probably want to use blueprints. Maybe you have some gameplay logic for eating apples or picking them up and hurling them at your enemies. If we want to use those blueprints with the dropper plugin, we can. The only thing we can't do is have multiple simulated meshes in the same blueprint. You would want to separate those and make sure that the static mesh is the root component. Now let's pretend like you're happy with this scene and we want to preserve where everything is. This process is called baking and to do that all we have to do is exit the dropper mode and the process is started automatically. And as you can see now we're back to the regular selection editor mode. Before I close this video, I'd like to offer just two pieces of advice. The first is to start slow and work your way up. You may want to drop thousands of really high detailed assets in your scene, but your computer probably doesn't share your enthusiasm. The second is to embrace subtlety. It can be easy to get carried away with the dropper plugin, but sometimes all that's really necessary is just a few assets in just the right place to complete the scene. Well, that about wraps it up. Thank you very much for your interest in the plugin. There's a link in the description to the Unreal Marketplace store page. You can check that out if you'd like more information. If you have any questions, please feel free to leave them in the comments below.